It is Mario Batista who had an absolutely phenomenal 2020-22 at uh, 3 and 0, of course, and is looking soon to build a great 2023 as well. But Mario, talk to me. Four months since the last fight, uh, the holidays were around. What 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 what'd you do? Any vacation? Was it all work? A little fun? What's what's the time off been like? Uh, a, a little bit of both. You know, I, I got the bonus, so I just decided, like, you know, take advantage of it. You know, um. Went to Vegas, went back to Vegas, you know, had a little fun there, uh, came back, uh, got promoted to black belt, uh, had the holidays with the family and, and, you know, it was, it was pretty good. You know, now, now uh, I feel good about getting back to work and, you know, getting back to that, that grind. That's awesome. Good for you. You got to enjoy it a little bit, right? I know you're investing to the future, but you got to enjoy the, the fruits of your labor a little bit, have a little fun. Oh, absolutely. I think the last time I got a bonus was like right before uh, the lockdowns and COVID and everything. So couldn't really do much, you know, um, which was probably good. I was able to save that all that money. So, <laughs> but this time I, man, I, I kind of splurged a little bit. So I good. dig it. I dig it. I, talk to you about the black belt promotion. I saw that, man. I know, listen, I mean, you're on this charge to be a USC champion, but man, that black belt, uh, that's a journey in itself, right? Talk to you about the, the, the moment of that and, and just the meaning and, and what that, what that stood for for you. Oh man, it was, it was a long time coming, you know, and I, and I was pretty average with, with the time. So it was about 10 years of jujitsu and uh, yeah, I mean, getting to that point, it still feels like I, I don't know much and there's so much to learn. Um, But getting my black belt from Crouch, you know, who I've been with for about eight years, uh, man, it it was pretty awesome to, to get that achievement. And uh, honestly, what was getting me a little worried is that you have to give a speech you know, for your black belt. <laughs> and you know me, I, I'm not the biggest talker or anything. So, um, but it went good. You know, I, I was glad I did it. And uh, yeah, uh, still getting better at jujitsu though. I love it, man. That's big. I imagine you were pretty nervous about the speech, man. That's incredible. So talk to you. So what do you, like, you know, I was kind of curious about you because I was wondering what you're doing your time. I know you're a dad. Uh, I know you got family. Uh, it, what do you do? I mean, it seems like everything I see, you know, social media, it's just you training, you grinding, you doing that. What do, you, what do you do for fun? Is there anything? I know you took a, a trip to Vegas, which is nice. What, what, what else? What, what kind of do to enjoy your spare time? That, that's pretty much it, man. Like, <laughs> I, I just train. Um, and on my off time, like, I like to do more jujitsu classes, you know, and like just tone down the conditioning, the intensity, and just enjoy my time there because I, I really do love martial arts and, and learning and studying. Um, but anything, you know, outside of that, only for a couple of weeks after my fight, I decided to work on this truck I have in my garage as an 85 Silverado. And so I'll put a little bit of money into that and work on it a little bit. And then I don't know. I just forget about it for a little bit and go back to training. And it's a slow process. That truck's getting done slow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Well, let's talk about the martial arts journey. You're back in action on March 11th. It's at the apex. I was curious because the apex has been really good to you. Right. But I mean, there is a pay-per-view one week earlier at T-Mobile Arena with the big sold-out crowd. So when you got the assignment, were you like, yes, I, I love fighting at the Apex? Or was there any part that was like, ah, can't you get me a T-Mobile? Get me the big crowd? Uh, I thought it was going to be the Apex. Uh, <laughs> but then once I seen, I was like, ah, that's, I guess that's like right in the middle. You know, I'd rather be like on a big pay-per-view card. But hey, I'll, I'll take what I can get. I think that place sits like four or 5,000 people. Mm-hmm. So, um yeah, like I said, I'll take what I can get, and I'm super excited though. I'm, I'm ready to, to see the crowd and hear the crowd. And after the last performances, if I can have a performance like that in front of a crowd, uh, man, that would that would be awesome for me. That's right. I totally forgot that one's going to be at the new Virgin Hotel, the the new place that they're going to go to. I totally forgot about that. So yeah, so you get yeah, you said you get a little bit of in between, right? Not the madness of the pay per view, but you still get a little crowd to cheer you a little bit. Exactly. Beautiful fit. All right. Now, the opponent, of course, Guido Canetti, uh, two-fight win streak, uh, kind of resurgent, man. I mean, uh, one of the senior guys in the, in the division at 43 years old, but has looked really good his last two times out. So give me your thoughts on, on him as an opponent. Oh, I think he's super tough, like, especially in that first round. I think he can compete with a lot of people, um, and that's where he's been getting those, those finishes. You know, um, the fight goes a little bit longer. You know, it, it kind of sways out of his, you know, direction. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's had two good performances. Um, I've had two first-round finishes, and so we're kind of meeting up. 
And, you know, props to him. You know, uh, you don't see too many uh, older guys in, in the lower weight divisions. Yeah, no question about it. I you, you you said it right there. I mean, the first round finishes that you both guys had together. I mean, it seems like that opening five minutes is going to be pure chaos. Is that is that kind of what you're expecting? Well, just early fireworks? Yeah, and I, I think we'll meet each other with, like, you know, some good intensity. But I think uh, after a lot of scrambles and a lot of, uh, you know, engagements, I think that that's where the youth is going to kind of help help me out, unfortunately, for him. Um so, yeah, anything after that, I, I kind of see it going downhill for him. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Now, here's what's interesting is, right, like you, you talked about, you, look, you're not the call-out type. You're not the big talker, that sort of thing. But, I, look, I, I thought a ranked opponent was going to come in this matchup with the year you put together, right? So I know your division is incredibly deep, and there's a ton of great fighters in it. But, I mean, a win here, especially if it's impressive like you've been getting, I mean, do you take to the mic and start trying to make some call-outs? Is that within you to do that? Uh, it, it's not really in my nature, especially to call out someone specifically, because, you know, I even said it last time I want a, a top 15, but me saying that is looking like it's not going to be enough. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'm going to have to single someone out or maybe a couple people and, and say some names on the mic. Um, and you know, and that's what my coaches are telling me too. Like you need to start looking into that and start doing things like that. Even if it's not your nature, try do it in your own way, and, uh, you know, it, it'll get you a little bit farther for sure. Yeah. Well, I think that's the tough balance, right, is is not trying to create some character, not trying to be something you're not. I mean, you're a respectful martial artist who's just trying to, you know, carve his own path. But I just – I think another win, again, four in a row – in this division, it just it would deserve a ranked matchup next to at least give you that opportunity to prove yourself. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm not big into calling anyone out, but if I get myself like known and and get these good performances, maybe someone will call me out. And if if it goes that way, oh, I mean, I, I'll I'll talk shit all day about that. You know, I, <laughs> I won't let anyone talk shit on me. I'll give it back, but. At, for me to to engage that or to start it, it it'd be a little bit hard. Uh, now now I'm gonna have to find somebody to call you out just so I hey. can hear you talk shit, man. <laughs> hey, I I don't mind that. You could start it up for me. I'll do it. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> hey, well, talk to you about what's going on at the top of your division, right? Uh, a lot of Arizona ties to the top of the division right now. I'm curious, you know, Henry Cejudo's coming back. Give me your thoughts on his chances against Aljamain Sterling. I mean. Obviously, he's a phenomenal athlete, but he spent a lot of time away from the sport. So what do you think, man? Do you like his his, his uh, opportunity in, in that fight, or do you think it's going to be tough after that much time away? Um, I, I think Henry has the right mindset to to get into a good fight like that or get back into it. But Al Jermaine, man, his, his grappling and jujitsu together, um, I think it's going to be a tough fight for Henry. Um, but I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. You know, Sean's right there in the mix. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens between those two. And then, you know, like Sean's ready to go and we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, obviously you have some history with Sean O'Malley as well. So I'm just kind of curious. I mean, do you think either one of those fighters like is a better matchup for him? Do you think he has a bet? I mean, obviously you're talking about two all time greats in the division and, and Sean O'Malley's trying to get up there, but do you think he, he, he would be better against Aljamain or better against the or do you think he's capable of competing with both of them? I think both of them, you know, and both have uh, – Henry and Aljo have a similar kind of style as far as, like, good grappling, you know, a decent stand-up. But I think the fight, the money fight and the entertaining one, especially the conferences and everything beforehand, would be Henry versus uh, Suge. I think I think that'd be pretty good. I think they'd sell the crap out of that fight. I, I think that'd be a lot of fun as well. I mean, it sounds like he's got that new contract and he'll be challenging soon. We'll see how it all plays out. There's some exciting fights at the top of the division. I know you're trying to get to the top of the division too. So I guess, you know, we got to get to your fight on March 11th, but you, you kind of you predicted it a little bit, but what do you expect to see? Cause it looks on paper, like it's just going to be absolute chaos from the start. Yeah. I, I think that's what it's going to be. I, I'm going to have to weather the storm, you know, with my own intensity and, you know, I'm going to be looking for like that first round finish like I have, but like always, I will be ready for a three-round war if that, if that's what it takes. I love it. Well, Mario, it was an amazing year for you. Look forward to you having another great one as well. Uh, excited about the fight. Going to try to find somebody to start talking shit about you so I can hear your shit talk too, and uh, we'll get this thing going. 